Steve. Ever do any snake charming? Well, that's right in my hand. It's charming, but I kind of think they'd resent being called snakes. Why? A year ago, an American citizen named Carter went to India ostensibly to sell farm machinery in the northern provinces near the border. So? Last month, the Maharaja's inspectors staged a surprise raid. They opened a few crates of this. Uh, farm machinery, and here's what they found. Instructions for sabotage. Detailed plans for staging uprisings in each locality, and others. So it works, huh? A man named Gouda testified that he had uh, witnessed Carter on more than one occasion, giving money and instructions to local agitators. Carter was convicted and sent to prison over there. Sounds like an open and shut case. It was shut. But this morning, so far as I'm concerned, it popped wide open again. This man, Gouda. The witness? This morning, he contacted us. He's hiding in Bombay at this address. For obvious reasons, uh, this has to be kept undercover. Well, if Gouda isn't hiding, that means that somebody's looking for him. Get over there, Steve. Talk to Gouda. The case against Carter is a frame. Find out who's behind it, and then smash them. Well, that's it. You've got your assignment. Good luck. Sure, I've got my assignment. Fly halfway around the world to Bombay, India, and talk to a gent named Gouda who has something important on his mind all of a sudden. It's Friday afternoon when my plane lands in Bombay. By the time I get into the city and check in at a small hotel, it's almost dark. I head to the rooming house where Gouda's hiding out. Good evening, sir. Hi. Hey, you people take your fires pretty calmly around here, don't you? A house down the street. Yeah. They're burning it. A man died of bubonic plague. Plague? Mm. No wonder there's nobody around the place. Such things are not unusual here. See? I'm sketching the fire. <laughs> not bad. Passes the time. Here, I will sketch you. <laughs> thanks, but no thanks. It will only take a minute. Minutes they haven't got. Very well. What can I do for you? <laughs> thanks. I know the room I want. There. The guy you wanted to see, Steve Mitchell from the United States. Come in quickly. Close the door. Lock it. Now, your credentials, please. So, did anyone follow you here? Not that I know of. Why? In my position, one cannot be too careful. I have been followed, but I managed to throw them off my trail. Look, what did you want to tell me? I was paid to give false testimony against the American Carter. We thought it might be something like that. Who pays you and why? They promised me much money, but they only paid me half. Now I will have my revenge. Who's they? The ones who were in charge of stirring up revolt in the border provinces. So they framed Carter, huh? Okay, let's have their names. There are two of them. One...
great spot I'm in. The race to get to Gouda has turned into a dead heat. Gouda's dead, and the heat is on me. It's really a neat frame. A U.S. agent bumps off the key witness in a case against a U.S. citizen. Somehow I've got to find out who slugged me and keep away from the police until I do. Morning, sir. Hi. How about some breakfast? Tea and rice? <laughs> no, thanks. Ham and eggs. So sorry. No tea and rice. Is that all you got? Dry fish. Okay. Tea and rice. I fix. What a bracelet. In Gouda's room. Yes. Let's get it. You read about the big excitement? Excitement? Yes. Big killing. He got away. Police know what he looked like. How do they know what he looks like? At the Lumbing House is the uh, artist student. He got a picture of the killer. Very good picture. That looks like. Now in the realm of peace, your problem will be solved. Bandara is with you. Hey, where did you come from? Bandara comes from everywhere and from nowhere. Hmm. Well, wherever you came from, I want to talk with you. Of course. You were impelled to visit me. Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry. No sale. What I want is a little information. Look, this crest in your ad, is that your trademark? It is the symbol which identifies Bandara in the spirit realm. Hey, look. Come down off that cloud for a minute, will you? Do you own a bracelet with a crest like that on it or not? Earthly possessions are of such little significance to Bandara that he sometimes loses the memory of them. You probably also lost the memory of where you were last night. Last night? I do not seem to recall. I may have been in a trance. Yeah. Or trying to put me in a trance with a gun barrel on the back of my head. The only weapons Bandara uses are words of wisdom. Oh, Mrs. I'm sorry. I didn't know you were occupied, Bandara. Mrs. Trevelyan, if you will wait in the other room, I will be with you shortly. right -o. Oh, uh, by the way, how is the little romance coming along? Earthly attachments, Mrs. Trevelyan, are but symbols. Yes, yes, of course. Frightfully difficult, though, to realize it at the time. You were about to... Yeah. Depart from the realm of Bandara. But don't be surprised if I return soon to the realm. You get away from me. You figure 
around collecting that reward on me, huh? What do you think? Well, you'll have to wait. I hope. Well, what do you want to do? Walk the streets until somebody spots you and grabs you? Can't go back to my hotel. Let's see. You live alone? Why, you... No. Sorry, you just tipped your mitt. We'll try your place. Come on. You think I'm kidding? Nice place you got here. Make yourself at home. Thanks a lot. Now what? I don't know yet. This isn't going to do you any good. Your picture is plastered on every paper in town. You're telling me. You're an American, aren't you? So what? So am I. You're not another American to me. You're a trip home. I'm tired of this stinking place, and I'm broke. That's exactly why I grabbed you. I've got to find a place to hide out till I can get the guy who framed me. Sure, sure. Just the innocent little bystander who got framed. Put on a new record, will you? What's your name? Carol. Mine's Steve. You like it. And you're not interested in helping me. Are you kidding? Would it make any difference if you knew I was innocent? Everybody knows you killed the man in the boarding house. No, Carol. I didn't kill him. Who did then? I don't know. I've got one prospect. If I can get him down off cloud eight long enough to make him talk. You sound convincing. You still don't believe me? Forget it. Okay. What good is it going to do you to stay here? Right now, this is the safest place I know in Bombay for me. Okay. Go ahead. Sit around as long as you like. But remember this. You can't stay awake forever, and the moment you doze off, you're a dead pigeon. What time is it? A little past noon. Oh, boy. 30 hours of no sleep. You know, you're a strange guy. I don't get you. What do you mean? Well, if I were you, I'd be trying to figure a way to get out of town. That's what I would be doing if I was guilty. If you were guilty. <clears throat> oh, boy. When this deal's over, I'm going to hit the sack for a week. Well, you're safe for the time being, so just relax. I'm so relaxed now. I'm sort of mixed up. You weren't so mixed up a moment ago. Trying your best to get out that door. I'm glad you stopped me. I, I, I mean, I guess I'm glad. It's real smart, tossing away my ticket home. You didn't really kill that man, did you? No. I tried to make myself believe you did. I thought I was being so tough. I guess I'm not so tough. I guess not. So, what happens now? That's up to you, Steve. I won't try to call the police anymore. You can stay here as long as you want. Nothing I'd rather do, believe me. But, I can't figure out this deal sitting around here. Where are you going? To the realm of peace. To what? <laughs> Forget it. I'll tell you about it when I get back. Maybe we can talk about it over a drink. Yeah. Maybe I'll have something to celebrate then. See you later.
Ahmed, please. Why were you following me just now? I was not following you. Come on, open up. Your picture was in the papers. I saw it yesterday. I read about the reward. Following me for a reward? Guess again. Very well. I will tell you how it came to be. I'm listening. You see, I have a cousin who lives here in Bombay. I came to visit him for the weekend. It so happened he was staying in the same hotel you were. What's stalling? I'm telling you. Hold it. So that's why you were stalling, huh? Police! Police! You wanted a reward, huh? Oh. Good afternoon, Miss. Hey, do you specialize in popping out of nowhere? Most people who seek my help specialize in entering through the front door. You got an electric eye in that back window? Those who seek to enter the realm of peace by stealth do not find peace. Well, maybe not. But sometimes they might pick up a little information. A little information is a dangerous thing. Better than none. Strange. I have no consultations at this hour. Who's in charge here? This is the police. I have no traffic with the police. What do they want of me? I've got a great idea. Why don't you go out front and find out? what you wanted to know? Yeah, things are beginning to fall into place. Where's this realm of peace you spoke about? It's a place run by a guy by the name of Bandara. Do you think he's involved in the killing? I did, but not anymore. The thing goes together something like this. Suppose an outfit wanted to cause trouble and revolt in the Boundary Provinces. Revolt? The outfit ships sabotage pamphlets into the district in crates of farm machinery. Then, when the plot is discovered, it's pretty simple to place the blame on Carter, the machinery salesman, who knows nothing about what's going on. Sounds pretty involved to me. Yeah. 
They pay a guy named Gouda to testify against Carter. But they don't pay him enough. He tries to blow the whistle on him, but they kill him right while I'm talking to him. Then they put the frame on me. On me, the frame looks good. The United States government agent knocking off the key witness against the United States citizen. You're a government agent? Yeah. Good have told me there were two people running this outfit. I think one of them is a guy by the name of Ahmed who's been chasing me around all day, trying to sick the cops on me. Hey, is this your jewel case? Yeah. Well, what do you know? A bracelet with Bandara's crest on it. I guess I should have thrown it away, shouldn't I? Yeah. The class broke when you conked me over the head the other night, didn't it? I thought you were unconscious and didn't see us. How did you find out about me, Steve? I saw a painting of you at Bandara's when I was there. Then I remembered some sucker of his kidding him about a recent romance. I put two and two together and it added up to you. Bandara gave you this bracelet. You were wearing it the night before last, and then yesterday morning, when you spotted me outside of Bandera's, you played it dumb. That was smart. I'm sorry you found out about me, Steve. I, I knew you had. I saw it in your eyes when you walked in the room. I wasn't kidding about liking you. Yes, I liked you a little, too. Sorry I had to do what I did. What do you mean? drink I just gave you, I put poison in. You didn't poison me. You're kidding. You're not kidding. Steve. You did poison me. I had to. I'm sorry, Steve. So, it is all over. You had to do it, Carol. He got away from me at Bandara's before the police arrived. Now it is quite simple. I will take his body somewhere and then notify the police. We are in the clear. Yeah. So, he is very heavy. Let me give you some help. Sit down. Let me go. You're not going anywhere. The poison, I saw you drink it. No, you didn't. I poured it out the window when my back was turned. And why did you pretend? To get your pal, Ahmed. You still haven't got any evidence. Oh, Ahmed's a jury type. I think I can get him to tell the whole story to the police. Besides, I still have the gun that you killed Gouda with. Steve, listen to me. Give me a break. Skip it. I'm taking you both in. Yeah, that's about it, Commissioner. Carter's out of jail. Carol and Ahmed are in. Good work, Steve. You take so long, darling. Please hurry. I'm tired of waiting for you. Yeah, I'm a little romance with Carol curdled. Doesn't sound like you lost much time reconverting. <laughs> well, you know me, Commissioner. After all, darling, you cannot expect a beautiful woman to sit here while you ignore me. Now come here, and I will forgive you. <laughs>